You know I've traveled near and far To see the shining sea I've seen a lot of places And people that were nice to me One place that's in my heart And this is how I feel I'm talking about my hometown, Fayetteville She's nestled in the sand hills On a river called Cake Fear Special to so many Who proudly served our country here She was named for Lafayette And known for cotton mills I'm talking about my hometown, Fayetteville My hometown, Fayetteville I'm so proud to be from here It don't take long when you're away from home To find out how you feel It's always good to come home to Fayetteville Babe Ruth hit his first one Heard around the world Sherman marched for the Union And burned the arsenal Old Market House still standing But stands for freedom's will I'm talking about my hometown, Fayetteville Take long when you're away from home To find out how you feel It's always good to come home to Fayetteville My all-American city, Fayetteville Talking about my hometown Fayetteville Good evening and welcome to our June 12, 2017 regular Fayetteville City Council meeting. I'd like to ask the Reverend Rob James from First Baptist Church to come to the podium, please. Lead us with an invocation and then remain up there, if you would, after our pledge to tell us a little something about the church. Sure. If everybody would please rise and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. So let us pray. Our Lord and our God, we come to you this night to ask for the wisdom and guidance that only you can provide. We thank you for our community, our city, and all of its people. We ask for your blessing on those that we have elected to serve us and to help make our city better. Grant them the courage to seek out those in need, to meet our neighbors where they are, and to make sound judgments that seek the good of all people. May they be a blessing. Be with those in our city whose struggles and concerns we may not see, and may they feel your presence even when it seems far away. Stand with those who are still recovering from Hurricane Matthew. Speak to the hearts of those that you have called to help them rebuild their homes, their livelihoods, and their sense of hope. May we continue to be agents of your peace and your love for each of them. Lord, be with the citizens of this community who are here because of their military service. Care for them, keep them safe, and help them to see our city as a loving and supportive home, even if it's a temporary home. Above all, we ask that your spirit be with each of us gathered here this night, as we ask for the only thing that we can ask, for your will to be done here on earth as it is in heaven. I pray these things in the name of the Father who governs the universe. 
the Son who taught us how to care for our neighbors, and the Holy Spirit, which can dwell and move even in city council chambers. Amen. Thank you, Reverend James. At this time, I'd like to ask Sonia Patton to bring up PAC 709, PAC 787, and PAC 74, I'm sorry, Troop 746. Now, PAC 709 is from Westminster Church. PAC 787 is from St. Patrick's. And Troop 746 is Cumberland, Cumberland United Methodist. They're going to lead us in the pledge. States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all very much. Fine looking group. Reverend James, tell us something about uh, First Baptist. Well, we're glad to be represented here this evening. Uh, First Baptist Church turns 180 years old this year. So we will have been in that spot in Fayetteville for 180 years. And this Sunday is a special Sunday for our church because for the first time, I believe, in our 180-year history, we are not only commissioning missionaries to serve here. So after Hurricane Matthew, we are sending a mission team to spend a week in Lumberton to serve our geographical neighbors, rebuild homes. But we're also going to be ordaining our associate minister in the same day. So this is uh, Reverend, soon-to-be Reverend Stephanie Bohannon. She will be our new associate. She is our associate pastor, but she'll be official as an ordained minister of the gospel on Sunday. So it's an exciting time at our church, and I'm glad to be here. And where is your church located, and how can folks find out more? So if you walk outside of this door and look to the right, you'll see us. We're the big red building next to Hay Street United Methodist Church. So. Thank you so much for being here. Well, thank you for having me. Ms. Sheila Kufi. Ms. Cuffey, come on up. Tell us. Uh, I know, and I mispronounce it every I'm time not, she comes up, too. I'm not going to get him. <laughs> I, I think that's our uh, just our little personal thing, and it'll be okay, Mayor. It's fine. <laughs> I appreciate you <laughs> hanging with us. And again, that is Sheila Cuffey, and um, I will... Uh, yeah like to thank the mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, and this honorable council for allowing me the time to stand before you. Um, it is always a pleasure to be before you, um, garnering your support. Um, we know that um, you're, you are a body of, of working councilmen and, so we, and, and women, and so we thank you for all that you're doing on behalf of our city. Um, I'm today representing two organizations, Greater Fayetteville United, and the Human Relations Commission. As the chair of the Human Relations Commission, um, I am uh, partnering with Greater Fayetteville United in conducting a Cumberland County-wide social capital survey, which will measure um, relational trust, communication, interest and engagement in politics and national affairs, formal and informal group involvement, giving and volunteering, faith-based engagement, and quality of life indicators. Now, this survey has already been mailed out. It was mailed out um, all over the county, all over the city, uh, to approximately 4,000 random homes. Um, we are today encouraging them, people, to go ahead and fill those um, surveys out and get them back to us. The survey is being administered by a nationally organized consultant and is also available in Spanish. So again, I sent it, we sent it out to 4,000 um, random homes throughout the, the county. The survey can be completed by mail, phone, or by internet. The results of the survey can be used to tackle local issues such as poverty, racism, trust, crime, homelessness, and lack of civic engagement. In addition to conducting the survey, Greater Fayetteville United will communicate the results and sponsor an inclusive community forum later this fall, focusing on Cumberland County's indicators of social capital in an effort to encourage engagement and develop holistic so solutions for the community. 
This project will provide the data we need to establish a benchmark and empower residents and local agencies as we work to build a stronger community and strengthen bonds. Greater Federal United is an organiz a nonprofit organization established about 20 years ago and has been involved in several critical community efforts, including study circles and community conversations. Greater Federal United meets every Wednesday, uh, once a month on the first Wednesday at 7.30 a.m. at the Kiwanis Recreation Center. Members include engaged residents, nonprofits, and representatives from universities, local government, and organizations serving our community and welcomes newcomers at any time. This project is funded by a 20,000 grant from the Raymond and Eleanor Manning Family Fund of Cumberland Community Foundation Incorporated and in addition, a $12,460 grant from the City of Fayetteville's Human Relations Department. The Federal Cumberland Human Relations Commission is proud to be a partner with Greater Federal United to provide the support for the community forum this fall. So we're encouraging everyone, we're encouraging you, Council, if you know someone that has received this in the mail, please encourage them to either fill the, the hard copy out and mail it back, or encourage them to go do it online. Or if that doesn't work and they get a phone call from the consultant, just take the time to fill out the, to, to answer the questions so that we can get a complete look at the demographics across our country, the disparities that may be there between uh, communities. Uh, we're gonna do some cross tabulations. We'll be able to look at things on racial divides. We'll be able to look at things at economic divides. Um, and so we're just asking everyone to do their part and to support our social capital survey. Thank you. Thank you so much. Y'all do some great work over there. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, I'd like to ask Rob Stone, our Director of Infrastructure and Engineering, to come up. While he is on his way up, did I promote you? That's the correct title, right? Or something? Okay. would like to introduce uh, Caleb Morrison. Caleb is a second grader at Encore Academy, and he's joining us in Mr. Arp's absence. And uh, Caleb had won an auction with the Encore Academy to uh, hang out and have dinner with the council. And uh, we appreciate him being here. So next state senator right there. <laughs> so, Mr. Stone. Good evening, Mayor Council. Good to see you this evening. We're just going to give you a quick update on some of the roadway projects and uh, um, other things that happened after the hurricane. Uh, right now, Offing Drive um, has been awarded. The bid has been awarded. A, a construction contract. Uh, we're expecting the public meeting to be held around August. Uh, th I mean, I'm sorry, um, June 15th. Uh, we think the uh, the project will actually start in a couple of weeks, and we expect the project to be completed mid-August. Uh, North Cool Spring Street, the bids for construction are due Thursday, June 15th, uh, next week. Uh, we're looking at the estimated completion date on that one is um, around mid-November. And then we, got, we have Shawcroft Road, which if you remember, we had the temporary uh, culvert put in for that, so we were able to open that up temporarily. We're still waiting on the hazard classification study from Dam Safety. Uh, we've been working with the engineer on that project to, to finish that. Unfortunately, he's had some uh, family medical issues, so it's delayed that project a little bit. Um, also going to the dams, um, if you notice not item 6.09 on your uh, agenda is to bring a consultant in to provide uh, um, project management services for Mirror Lake Dam and Devonwood Lower Dam. Uh, and also, this will also initiate the public outreach portion. So we're looking at uh, beginning that. We're working with uh, Kevin O'Reilly and the corporate communications to reach out to the public and talk with all the dams. Uh, that should be starting in mid-July for those meetings. We'll, we'll have that finalized here the next week. So, Any questions at all? all right, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Stone. <clears throat> at this point, I would like to ask our director of the Fayetteville VA Hospital, Ms. Elizabeth Goolsby, to meet me up front. This is an honor to be able to stand up here with this plaque. Let me tell you, Colonel Goolsby and I have worked together on several projects. One, of course, council remembers going back about a year and a half ago now, I guess. Yep, 
So uh, we started with veterans homelessness, and then we went to the opioid uh, task force. And um, this is uh, this is really cool. You want to tell Council? Sure. Uh, about three years ago, as the mayor said, we embarked upon looking at homelessness across Fayetteville and Cumberland County, addressing the causes of homelessness and, more importantly, what are the holes in the safety net. This garnered us about a year and a half ago a recognition of one of three cities in all of the, of, uh, the U.S. that had achieved functional zero homelessness for veterans. That meant on any given day, there was no veteran who was unhoused for greater than 30 days unless by choice. This has really become recognized throughout the, the country. We've had many, many calls about it. Secretary Hall, the Secretary for Veterans Affairs and Military Affairs, was very impressed by this accomplishment. <clears throat> and at the Homeless Summit in May, he presented the award that I'm going to ask the mayor to read. You may have to borrow your readers. <laughs> So this is uh, from the 2017 conference called Bringing It Home, Ending Homelessness in North Carolina. Recognizes and applauds the accomplishments of the community of Fayetteville and Cumberland County for achieving the U.S. ICH standards for ending veterans' homelessness and for being a model of innovation and inspiration for North Carolina. Council will share this with you. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You. Chancellor Anderson, my bow tie friend, yeah. you look good, man. Thank you. I taught him to wear a bow tie. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Chancellor, how you doing? Uh, this is a proclamation to Fayetteville State University in recognition of uh, this great accomplishments. Whereas Fayetteville flourishes with the wealth of exceptional educational institutions and acclaimed centers of learning, and whereas Fayetteville State University was founded as the Howard School by seven African Americans, David A. Bryant, Nelson Carter, Andrew Chestnut, George Grange Sr., Matthew Leary Jr., Thomas Lomax, and Robert Simmons for the education of African American children on November 29, 1867 in Fayetteville, North Carolina, and whereas Senate Bill Number 472, known as the Act to Establish Normal Schools, was ratified on May the, March the 8th, 1877, which provided for the establishment of a teacher training institution for African Americans in, in North Carolina. And whereas the 10-year-old Howard School in Fayetteville was selected as the site and renamed State Colored Normal School in 1877, and thus became a second state-supported institution after Chapel Hill in North Carolina. And where a state colored normal school was renamed the state normal and in industrial school in 1916, state normal school for the Negro race in 1921, and state normal school in 1926, Fayetteville State Teachers College in 1939, and Fayetteville State College in 1963, and Fayetteville State University in 1969, and in 1972 became a constituent institution of, of the University of North Carolina. Whereas FSU currently offers 43 undergraduate programs, 23 master's degree programs, and one doctoral program in education leadership to a diverse body of over 6,000 students. And whereas more than 26,000 alumni, which I'm one, of Fever State continue to distinguish themselves in the field of education as well as in all fields of endeavor. And whereas the history and legacy of Fever State should be called to the attention of our citizens as the university celebrates its sequential 150th anniversary. Uh, it's resolutions hereby presented uh, by Mayor Nat Robinson and the City Council in recognition of uh, November 4th through 10th, 2017, is Fayetteville State University Week. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we are honored to receive this from the City of Fayetteville. Uh, 150 years is quite a long time to, to exist, to flourish. Uh, to be ranked number one in many categories in the country. We have programs that are either ranked number one and two in nursing, psychology, et cetera, in the country. That's what we like to emphasize. And to the alums that have supported us, um, we owe them a lot. To the alums who haven't donated to us yet, I don't know what to say. Mitch, have you donated Mitch, huh? Um, <laughs> that's not in the media, that's not in the paper, okay. Um, but we thank 
the city on behalf of the university. I'd ask you to go on our website, take a look at the schedule of events that will run from August this year through April, especially some of the major figures we have and entertainers we have coming to speak. Uh, if you were a CSI fan, Hill Harper will be here. Uh, Dr. Henry Louis Gates, this Harvard scholar, will be here. Uh, one of the women from the movie Hidden Figures uh, will be here. And uh, the original person who was with John Glenn will be here. And we're trying to work on one of the women, Janelle Monet, from the movie. So there are a lot of things we're trying to do this year that will be outstanding. The second week of November, uh, the Chinese presidents from our six universities that we have partnerships with are all coming. That's this, the second week of November is the week we will reenact the signing of the deed by the seven men who put together that $136. The Chinese will be here, and um, the Chinese president from Inner Mongolia is bringing the world-famous Mongolian dance troupe also. So make sure you take a look at that. We'll also send the calendar to the council so you'll have it at hand. But again, thank you for this, Mayor. We appreciate it. Thank you, Chancellor Anderson. I uh, see a light that one of the council members uh, wants to say something to, but, uh, and I don't want to beat him to the punch, but I just want to tell you what a great asset Fayetteville State University is to our city, and we so much appreciate the partnership that we have and uh, certainly the, the, the relationship that we have. So thank, thank you. you. Council Member McDougal. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and I certainly want to echo those same thoughts from the mayor. I am a graduate of the university, and the university gave me an opportunity way back in 1968, and uh, I am on record as a giver. That's why I didn't mention your name. I checked. <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> thank I'm you, glad sir. he didn't call me out, Mr. McDougall. So. All right. Thank you thank so you, much, man. Chancellor. It's always a pleasure seeing you. By the way, I have for you our special signature sesquicentennial pins uh, for the council members. Great. And, and uh, Council Member Devier is also on your so board, on our board of, of trustees. trustees. Right. So and, thank uh, you, Council Member Devier, for the work you do for the make university. Make sure you, you get the, the checks, the donations from the council members. Okay? <laughs> thank you. Council, at this time, 5.0 is the approval of the agenda. Motion to approve. It's Mr. Moan. Second. Second by Mr. McDougall. That's for the addition of 6.001, which is the resolution discussed at dinner. Is that correct? Yes, uh, 6.001, addition of a resolution. Thank you. Mr. McDougall, you accept that? Yes. Yes. Okay, thank you. Any discussion? Okay, council, I'll ask for your vote. Mr. Arp joins us on the telephone. Mr. Arp, what's your vote? Three. Thank you, Mr. Arp. Madam Clerk, that's unanimous. The um, 6.0 is the consent agenda. Item 6.001 has been added to that. Is there discussion on consent? Motion to approve consent with the addition. Mr. Moan, seconded by Mr. Arp, just so everybody knows that he was really here. Any discussion on the consent? All right, seeing none, Council, I'll ask for your vote. Mr. Arp? Three. Madam Clerk, that's also unanimous. At this point, I would like to take a uh, point of privilege and ask Mr. Barksdale to meet me at the podium. Andrew, I promise I'm going to say something nice. That's beautiful. For the past decade, Mr. Barksdale has been reporting city news with the Fayetteville Observer, and he has accepted another position with the North Carolina Department of Transportation as the PIO? APIO. APIO. Uh, that's the assistant. Well, one thing at a time. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. No, so he's going to be working in the communications up there and uh, uh, pushing out the good news on yeah. all the great things that DOT is doing for, uh, for the state of North Carolina. Uh, I think the majority of this council has worked with you at least for the past three years. 
and many. Yep. Bobby, you're the old guy. How long are you? Well, Bill 10? and Bobby both since 07. Since 2007. So, uh, Andrew, congratulations on your Thanks. move. I'm not going to read the resolution, but this okay. was officially passed by the council. It, it yes. does go down into the annals of the great that's, things that we do in this city. That's fantastic. This is a pleasant surprise, and uh, thank you for the recognition. And I'm glad I could be you know, a part of all this in writing and, and trying to tell the story of the city. And I'll take that same mission to uh, promoting what DOT is doing. I'm sure you will. A lot of folks wake up every morning and look for your stories to see what went on the night before. So yep. I appreciate you. Thanks very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Now, who's going to report that tomorrow? Yeah, I'm looking for my notes that I can't tell you where they are um, because we want to introduce Jenna Neighbors, and Jenna is with the Fayetteville Cumberland Youth Council and joins us tonight. Um, Jenna, tell us what's going on and tell us something about yourself and your experiences with FCYC. Hi, I'm Jenna Neighbors. I've been a part of the Youth Council since its reestablishment about three years ago, and I served as the reporter this past Wednesday, I graduated from Massey Hill Classical High School, so I'm trying to do as much as I can with the Youth Council before I go off to NC State in the fall as a Park Scholar. Congratulations. FCYC does some pretty neat things. What was kind of your favorite activity? What did uh, what, you get out of it? That's a good question. I feel like networking was probably um, the best thing that I had because I got to meet young leaders not only around our community but on a state and a national level and I really, I really think that's impactful because then you make all these connections that you have for the rest of your life. So, Well, we were lucky as an organization for you to be on, on board. So thank you so much. Thanks for the hard work that y'all do over at FCYC. Any of you scouts that are sophomores or juniors, make sure you ask your principals at your high schools about joining the Fayetteville Cumberland Youth Council. If you're homeschooled, there are places for you also. If you'll just call the Parks and Recreation Department, they'll, they'll put you over. But uh, it is an organization that teaches leadership in the community. So look forward to some of you scouters joining. Council item 6.0 is the public forum. This is a time that Fayetteville residents can have input and a voice on what goes on in their city. Due to policy restrictions, the forum will last no longer than 30 minutes with each speaker limited to only three minutes to address the city council. Individuals wishing to speak at tonight's public forum should have signed up with the city clerk prior to tonight's meeting. So when you hear your name called by the city clerk, please come to the microphone, the podium, and speak clearly stating your name and home address for the record. Then when you see the lights uh, located on the podium change from green to yellow, that is an indication that you have 30 seconds left to speak. When you see the red light come on, your time has expired. And again, due to policy restrictions, we're unable to extend that time. So we'll start the public forum. Madam Clerk, please call the first speaker. May we have two speakers that would like to present together, Mr. Austin Padilla and Ms. China Melton. Hello, welcome. Hi. Okay. Um, should the green light come on, or are we good to? Uh, you, the time will start clicking when you start speaking. So. Okay. Well, uh, Mayor and Council, thank you for allowing us the opportunity to uh, address you this evening. My name is Austin Padilla. Uh, my address is 165 North May Street, uh, 2837. And uh, partnered with me is China Melton. My address is 105 Sweet Bay Court, Rayford, North Carolina, 28376. 
Uh, okay. This summer, we're interns with Democracy North Carolina. It's a nonpartisan, nonprofit group, uh, and we are working under Miss Val Applewhite. Uh, first, we'd like to thank Councilmember Crisp for uh, opening his home to us and giving us a greater understanding of local government, money in politics, and uh, issues in this community. Our uh, meeting with you has added to our summer experience. Uh, Council Member Devier, we look forward to uh, working with you on the Pathways to Prosperity uh, initiative this July, uh, seeking better outcomes for the impoverished in our community is important to us. <coughs> Go ahead. This evening, we'd like to announce our July 16th youth vote event at Cliffdale Recreation Center. When the voter ID law was struck down, our state was given the opportunity to pre-register 16 and 17 year olds to vote. Many citizens are unaware of that provision, so on July 16th, we not only want to pre-register 16 and 17 year olds, we want to educate them on their voting rights and educate them on the political process as well. It will be a great afternoon of food, performances, and most importantly, information about voting and the political process. We are here to invite each of you and the listening audience to this event. Again, this is at Cliffdale Recreation Center on Sunday, July 16th from 2 to 5 p.m. Admission is free and we hope you all will attend. One of our major campaigns this summer is on the issue of redistricting and racial gerrymandering. We hope to meet with each of you and understand and discuss your position on this matter. If you'd like to know more about Democracy North Carolina, visit our website at www.democracy-nc.org or visit our office at 223 Person Street, Suite C, right down the street. Thank you so much. Thank you all for joining us. Absolutely. So then again is July 16th at the Cliffdale Rec Center from 2 to 5, yep. and it's a pre-registration to vote drive. So yes. you guys are to be commended. Thank you for doing that. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Madam Clerk. Now our next speaker is Mr. Jerry Rhino. Welcome, Mr. Reinhold. Mr. Mayor, distinguished members of the Fayetteville City Council, good evening. My name is Jerry Reinhold, 516 Deer Path Drive, Fayetteville, North Carolina. Wednesday, June 14th, 2017, we celebrate two of our nation's historic events. The first is the 242nd birthday of the founding of the United States Army. Congratulations to past, current, and future members of our Army that began protecting a new nation on June 14, 1775, or more than one year prior to the signing of our Declaration of Independence. A majority of the Fayetteville City Council are also veterans, and thank you very much for your service. This week is also National Flag Week, and on Wednesday, we celebrate National Flag Day with our observance of the 240th birthday of Old Glory, which is adopted on June 14, 20, uh, 1777. Our flag has been changed 26 times since its adoption. Perhaps the future will see additional changes with the addition of new states. Throughout our nation's history, it has been our flag and our army and the other military services that have weathered many storms holding the nation together and protecting it from our foreign enemies. Wednesday, proudly display our flag and always keep the members of all our military services stationed in more than 150 nations in your thoughts and prayers. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Reinhold. Thank you for reminding us that. May we have no further speakers? Thank you, Madam Clerk. We'll close the public forum. Council will move to item 7.01, which is the adoption of the fiscal year 2017-2018 budget ordinance and fee schedule. And this time I'll recognize uh, Council Member Ted Moe. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, a big thanks goes out to you know, all the city staff, city departments, city management team for helping us get to where we are so far on our budget. So just want to give a good thanks. So, and with that... I'd like to make a motion that we adopt the fiscal year 2017-2018 budget ordinance and fee schedule, the fiscal year 2017-2018 strategic plan, the fiscal years 2018 to 2022 capital and technology improvement plans, capital project ordinances 2018-1, 
through 2018-12 and Capital Project Ordinance Amendments 2018-1 through 2018-12 as presented in our council packet. Okay, thank you, Mr. Second. Mayor. Seconded by Mr. McDougall. Discussion? All right. Uh, Mr. Colvin. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Moan, uh, echo your sentiment. Staff has done a great job in the council. We've met countless times in the last few months uh, from February, and um, I hate to belabor that, but there are just a few small things that I, that I think that a discussion tomorrow may get us to where we are with this budget. Um, some of the items, you know, without getting specific, um, I think that we need to have a little further discussion on, and for that reason, tonight I'm going to vote no until we get to our special call meeting tomorrow to uh, to deal with some of those, uh, those issues and concerns. Okay, thank you, Mr. Colvin. Seeing no further discussion, Council, I'll ask for your vote, please. The motion is to adopt the budget as pr presented. Red, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you, Mr. Arp. Those voting, uh, the oh, I'm sorry, Madam Clerk. The motion fails, 5-5. Five, five. Those voting against, Council Members Crisp, Arp, Robertson, Colvin, and Jensen. Those voting in favor are Devier, Wright, Hurst, McDougal, and Moan. Motion to adjourn. And we have the motion to adjourn. There you go.